Flash report card. So for those of you who are who have been following us on either TikTok or watched any of this, you probably already know these things. We went from the original three questions, how is your mental health, how am I doing as a husband, and what can I do better as a husband, and we added, what did I do poorly this week, and what did I do exceptionally well this week? So we're at five. I've added five more. Okay. And I, I've listed a whole bunch of things out here that I want to talk about that's crucial to the check-ins, but I want to explain a little bit what we do and why we do them so that people understand that this is more about making a better relationship and less about saving a marriage. The check-ins can absolutely do that if you're able to have a communication, uh, open communication with your partner and you trust them and you're safe. This is not that. This is just to continue to grow together as a couple, right? <clears throat> so we've added the phones have to be completely put away. They can't just be out. They have to be put in a pocket or put in another room so that they're not there. TV's off, radio's off. Um, we added the sit in the lap thing so that we can look at each other face to face and there's no distractions. We have intimate conversation that way. Um, and then you ask the questions, you discuss the questions, and then um, I wrote down some other things to take account of when you're doing this. We've had a couple people say that the first check-in that they did was hours long, mm -hmm. and they saw immediate changes in their partner because they were able to have a um, true conversation without there being conflict or, or any kind of competitive behavior. And I think it's important to remember those things. Um, all right, so let's get to the questions first. Once you've you've got your partner's undivided attention, it's important that when you do this that you don't say, we need to talk. All right. You need to say, do you have a minute? Because when you ask a question versus making mm -hmm. a statement, you're going to get a different response. When you ask a question, you're getting them to engage. When you make a statement, you can make them defensive or it has a triggering negative undertone. So that's a problem, and I'll get into that in a minute. So the questions now are the original five. Um how is your mental health? How am I doing as your partner? What can I do to be better as your partner? What did I drop the ball on this week? And what did I do exceptionally well this week? Bonus questions are how, um, how am I doing at meeting your emotional and intimacy needs? How would you rate our sex life on a scale of one to 10? Are you happy with the division of housework? Do you feel safe with me? And what is something that we should do that we haven't? Because now you are taking the first half of the conversation and having a lot of like personal hard talk because those, those questions are, they're intimate, they're hard. You're getting a, an honest, truthful discussion. Mm. The following five questions can uh, make sure that nobody's overworked in the home. It's going to make sure that uh, all needs are being met emotionally, intimacy, sexually, whatever. Um, and then you can start using the, the last questions to start maybe planning vacations to find new places to eat, whatever the case may be. So mm -hmm. I, I thought those were pretty good. Um, things to remember when you're doing these, uh, if you haven't set boundaries or expectations in your relationship, this could be a good time to do so. If you have set, set boundaries, this is a great time to make sure that both of you have the same definitions of the boundary set. Um, we've talked about in the past that communication is not just verbalizing things. It's also listening to understand, being able to communicate to make sure that everybody's on the same page with everything. Mm -hmm. And people always ask us about the expectations and the contracts that we have. And this is a good opportunity for you to implement that because you're already in a position where you have your partner's undivided attention. Do you have anything you want to add to that? I feel like I'm doing a whole lot of talking. I, I didn't even know you added five things to it. I know because so. I wanted to shock <laughs> you so you'd have something to talk about. <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to avoid phrases like you never or you always. These come across as combative and can be used um, as tools of manipulation in some cases. Um, I want to throw something in real quick before you move on. So this morning when I messaged you, I'm not going to go into what the text message was about, but there was right. a point where I said, I feel guilty for whatever the situation was. Right. I almost said, it makes me feel guilty, but nothing is making me feel guilty. I have that feeling. Right. So I wanted to give that as an example as the way you phrase things is important it because absolutely is. you're not doing anything to make me feel guilty. Nope. None of your actions are doing that and anything you said is doing that. That's an internalized feeling that I have to work through on my own. So changing that, I feel like made our conversation go smoother than it would have if I unintentionally place the blame on you with the way I said it. Right. Yeah, and I agree because you took accountability with what was going on. Right. People don't people want to be like you make me so angry. 
Mm-hmm. No, no, they really don't. You make you angry. You allow your brain to process the information that's being given to take it in a negative perspective. Right. I cannot stress how many times that I've had really shitty situations become very positive because I look at it as an opportunity to grow versus a negative. That It's really what it comes down to. And like, right. you know, the amount of stress that I'm under right now with the expansion and trying to do with what one of the businesses because of the hurricane. Mm-hmm. I could really be falling apart and just being like, it's the end of the world. I've lost those two businesses instead of trying to grow the one business that we have left standing and worry about those when the insurance comes through, when the building's rebuilt or whatever. I'm looking at all of this as an opportunity for growth because I have an opportunity right now where I have almost a year before this building is going to be back up and running Mm -hmm. that I can hire more people, train them, get them to do things the way that I expect them to get done. And then I can move people around and we can continue to open businesses and grow. Right. If I looked at this as a, a negative aspect and woe is me the entire time, I wouldn't have that mindset. Um, so it's important that you you recognize these things. Your um, the world, how does, what did the statement go? Um, the world can't change your attitude, but you can change your attitude about the world. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So try to engage your partner with questions instead of making statements. This is what I was talking about a minute ago. Statements trigger a feeling of judgment where questions engage curiosity. Things like, do you have a minute versus we need to talk? The Dave Chappelle killing him softly skit Mm -hmm. where he's like, Dave, we need to talk. And he's like, fuck. And he's like, every time we got to talk, it's something I got to do. And that is a very, it's funny. It was hysterical when I heard it. And every man that watches that for the first time laughs because they know that's exactly what's about to go down. If you just say, do you have a minute? Because you hit me with that the other day. You were like, hey, I know you're about to do that. But before you get on there, do you have a minute to talk to me? And I'm like, yeah, what do you, what's up? Like. It was a very different thing than had you been like, we need to talk because I'm like, oh, here we go. Right. You know, so that's super important to remember. Um, we need, uh, and by we, I mean everyone, needs to start listening to understand and not to respond. Allow your partner to complete their thought process before speaking. Work on giving a pause to think before you speak. Empathize and validate with what they're saying instead of just responding. And this will help you uh, help make them feel heard. Mm-hmm. And if you aren't sure what they're saying, repeat what you heard back to them and make sure that you digest it before you give a response. This is one of the things that I'm working on the hardest right now, especially when we get into a a conversation that I feel like I'm being attacked. I have to let you finish because nine times out of 10, we are arguing the exact same point to each other from a different standpoint because I didn't let you finish your point. And that's something that I am desperately working on, you know, and there's, it's getting to the point now where you're saying something and if you pause, I'm like, okay, are you done? Because I don't want to interrupt your thought process and then us regress. Right. Um, <clears throat> listening to understand is a big deal too because everybody gets caught up in having a conversation. They're just waiting for their turn to speak. They want their five minutes of fame. You know what I mean? So it's important to just allow that to process and, and play out. This thing keeps clicking. I don't know if it's because I'm touching the, the road mic or if it's the paper or what, but it's starting to drive me nuts. I feel um, like you just got a little louder. Did you just plug that back in? I don't know. Maybe. Did I, I get louder? Anything? Could be that I turned my, uh, I don't know. I'm mentally mm. not there today, apparently. Um, Before you move on, I want to touch on the processing aspect and like understanding. Mm-hmm. I process, depending on the situation and what is being said, like if I have a lot of information thrown at me, it takes a while for me to process that shit. So if you guys are getting into like a super intense conversation, it's okay to say like, I need to process this before we continue the conversation. Right. It's taken me... I don't know. There was a day that it took me like 12 hours to process everything we discussed. Right. And the next day I had to come to you and be like, okay, so we had the conversation. I processed it a little bit. Can we continue? Right. You know, I think that's important to recognize as well. Like not everything has to be done in one single conversation no. in a two hour time period. I agree. I feel like stretching it out is also going to help people recognize like regulating emotions and saying, okay, well he said this and that upset me. Why did it upset me? And that's something you can also discuss with your partner and be like, Hey, you said this yesterday. It triggered me. I didn't know why it triggered me, but I think I figured it out. I kind of want to talk to you about that. Right. I think that it's important to remember that when you have these conversations too, like, uh, and I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning of the check-in, you are not allowed to get defensive. I Mm -hmm. did not. You're not allowed to get defensive in response to what your partner tells you. Right. You are, we call this the report card because you are asking for a report card, the situational report. You want to know, like, all these things. And if you get defensive because you're asking for somebody to give you feedback, one, you're never going to get positive feedback again. You're going to make your partner feel like they can't talk to you safely. They're going to feel unsafe in discussing things with you. 
Um, there's going to be a whole lot of other things that play in, but when you can turn that off and know that you are asking for this and know that your grade is indicative of your work efforts, you can't be mad at anybody but yourself. So if, if, you know, we have a great week and the next week there's something that's happened and I've done something wrong and you deliver it to me in a, obviously not in a a negative way, Mm -hmm. I now have a week or two weeks, however long we have in between check-ins to start rectifying the situation, but it gives me a day or two to process. I really, you know, I hurt her by doing whatever I did, or I really dropped the ball by not making sure that her tire was changed or whatever, you know. Um, But it's not a defense thing. You're Mm -hmm. asking for this, that you can be a better partner. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to, my mom, my adopted mom gave me a great piece of information and it was, let me see, did I type it up? because it was a good, it was a good one. Um, She said that people love to match energies. So when someone is giving us the silent treatment and we give it back to them, that attitude is thrown back and forth. We mirror. That is normal human interaction. She said, but if you are able to do that with negativity, you should be able to do it with love. And when you realize that and you are trying to give your partner the best version of you, they should naturally want to do the same thing. Should. Obviously, there are shitty people out there. There are selfish people out there. There's narcissists, as much as I hate that fucking term. There are people out there who are going to do whatever they feel is best for them. But when you and I are having a great relationship and you're taking that extra step, I'm like, oh, bitch, I got to one up you. We're going we're gonna to do this now, you know, and like it's not a one up thing, but I want to be better because you're trying to be better. Right. You know, it, it's a, we feed off of each other. <clears throat> and if people do that in negative moments, you should right. absolutely be doing it in positive ones. I agree. I'm going to correct you. You said when we have a great relationship. We have a great relationship. You know what I mean. There's days that like, like yesterday, uh, that stupid cartoon was on. And and you got up and I'm like, oh, I like a big, hey. I like a junkie. <laughs> and you started doing that in the living room. And because you started doing that, I kept going. Yeah. So those are, those are like, that's an intimate moment for us. Like that's something I'm never going to forget. Yeah. It's stupid little moment in time, but it, it meant a lot. It was fun for me. Right. 